Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's good? It's your boy BQ with the Impact Lounge, number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan with your Impact Wrestling review. It is Monday afternoon. Then I'm recording this. If it's your first time here, consider hitting that subscribe button. Hopefully, we'll be back with an episode of The Cool Factor soon. I'm giving TW a break. His um his work schedule, home schedule has been really hard on him lately. Uh, we, you know, our plan was to always be doing Cool Factor episodes on Saturdays, but he's got a lot going on with his kids and all that. So I, w- I want to give him a break. And um, unfortunately, you get me by myself. I know I'm not as entertaining, as energetic as TW, but we're still here to talk a little bit impact and an episode that I thought was okay. Um, I wasn't a big fan of the really, 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 really long match that lasted forever for the sake of it. Not to say it wasn't a good match. It was a great match, but long matches aren't my thing. You know what I mean? So we're going to talk about that first. I kind of like to hit the main event sometimes right off the bat because that's the biggest part of the show. That's the, you know, the attention getter, what they're trying to put out there. So we're going to talk the main event. The main event was Josh Alexander, Speedball Mike Bailey. And um, first I got to say that I thought, or I, I don't thought, I, I've continued to think that Bully Ray has really outdone himself in the storyline. I was on the same train as many of you, very upset that he won the gauntlet. Um, I think if we weren't given so much, you know, Tommy Dreamer and main event matches and, you know, bringing in, you know, RVD who's 90 years old for half a year and Ken Shamrock and these guys just well past their prime. If it wasn't just such a consistent thing, I think I would have been more open minded initially to the bully Ray thing when he when he won. A lot of people on Twitter didn't like it. And a lot of people on Twitter were saying, give it a chance. Let it play out. See what it does. See what the story is. And I'll say that um, Bully has delivered. So when Josh put out the challenge, doing an open challenge, I want Bully Ray to come out. And then Bully comes out and does the, you know, the video package where he's showing pictures of the wife and everything. And I've said the last couple of weeks, Impact has a crutch. It's bringing the wife when you need to get heat on the heel. But it works, so it's whatever. But he shows the picture, and just what he delivered was something, you know. I say this about various segments uh, or various wrestlers from time to time. What he did with this promo was something Impact has been missing. I like to always point out when something is being done, something is being said that the show is missing because I think so much of the show just feels exactly the same from week to week. It, it looks the same, sounds the same. That's what I'm always saying, right? But when you see something that that just really stands out from the rest of the show, I tend to get excited because that's I just always think that's missing. Like when Mickey James come out came out, announced the last rodeo and was in you know tears. Um, the the couple times we've seen people in tears on the show had we own the night in the background and it completely you know this was something where she's out there and she's cutting you know standing in the ring. She's emotional and like the show is just missing that rawness, you know, so um, really what Bully Ray did or has done up to this point, the show's been missing it. So do I think it's going to be a, a show stealer match? Fuck no. But the story has been, you know, they brought Bully Ray in for a good story and they've done a pretty good story. So um, I give them love on that. So it was an open challenge, and what we end up getting is Mike Bailey coming out. And for people who follow spoilers or semi-follow spoilers, we knew ahead of time that this was a near 60-minute match. My first reaction was, I have no interest in a 60-minute match. I just don't. There's some people who love the wrestling aspect of wrestling. There's some who prefer the storytelling. There's some people who like a mixture of both. Or or they like good characters. They like a mixture of characters, storytelling, wrestling. Like I I like a little bit of everything. That's what I thought TNA was. Um, Especially when I first started doing the podcast. And now it's getting a little 
wrestling centric, which is not really what I want out of the show. But that's just me personally, you know. That's why I didn't connect with, you know, Ring of Honor for a really long time. I mean, I still watched it, but it was just so wrestling centric. And I always thought TNA was the perfect balance. And that's why I decided that, you know, once upon a time, I'm going to cover this company because they're doing, a, they're, 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 they're delivering a very well balanced show. I don't think this show is as well balanced right now. I think it's, it's, you know, it's very wrestling heavy, which they're clearly going for that. That's fine. I'm just speaking me as, for me as a fan. I prefer a little bit more balance that I think is lacking at the moment. But he puts out this open challenge. Mike Bailey comes out. Most people already knew he was coming out. He gets a microphone. I'm like, oh, shit, here we go. He sounded okay, though. But usually every time he talks, I'm like, take the microphone away from him. But um, he, he sounded okay here. He said, hey, if it's still an open challenge, let's do this, you know? So I asked the question on Twitter. I didn't get a lot of responses. I really thought um, I was going to get a lot of responses. And I, sh I probably should have asked this in the Impact Lounge engagement group on Facebook. Uh, but, I, but I just asked it on Twitter. And what I, what I had asked people was, did you think this was a classic? Or did you think this was just an unnecessarily long match, TV filler? Now, you might think that term TV filler is a bad term. You might think it's a good term. It was TV filler, and I don't mean that in a negative way. But we know that in December every year, the company phones the episodes in. We're going to get a couple best ofs and awards, and, and it's it's phoned in because it's the end of the year and the holidays and whatever. And I don't even mean that in a negative sense when I say phone it in. I don't mean they're like, okay, let's just half-ass it. It's half-assed, but I don't mean that. I really don't mean that in a negative way. I just mean at the end of the year. They just don't put that effort forth because um, it's the end of the year. It's the holiday season, and when January rolls around, they typically go all in again. So, yeah, was it filler because we're not going to put that much content on television in December? Yeah. Um, but as far as the match itself, the reason I didn't have interest in it when I first heard this match was near 60 Minutes was because we just saw Josh wrestle Frankie Kazarian for 40 minutes three weeks ago. And then about a year ago, we he had a 60-minute Iron Man match. You know, they're clearly they're doing the fighting champion thing with him. He's going to break Bobby Roode's record. And they want him to... They don't want him to break it like a heel would where they don't wrestle. They want him to hold this, this title forever and, and to beat everybody. You know? That, that's clearly what they're... What they're doing, they want it to mean something when he breaks a record. I've been saying forever they need to break this record. If it was WWE and you had this dude in another company holding your record, they're like, yo, let's break this record uh, ASAP, you know? So this was one that I really thought they should have addressed a long time ago, but they didn't think the right individual was in place. And Josh has been that dude. He's put, he's delivered great matches. Absolutely. But I didn't have interest in this initially because. We just, we get so many nothing matches for the world title that are just good wrestling matches. I, I didn't care that the title was on the line because it feels like the title's on the line every other week against whoever. Like he, he, he will defend it against whoever. And that's what makes the Steve Mac Macklin storyline so weird because he's, oh, what, where's my title shot? Yo, I, I feel like I could get a title shot if I showed up at the impact zone next week. So that's what that's what makes it kind of weird, but I just didn't have interest because we just watch a long ass match, and he's had several pretty long matches. You know, this is, it's not like he beats his opponents in, in in four minutes when he wrestles. So initially, I'm like, yo, do I really got to sit through this? I thought they paced the match very well, maybe even too well because it didn't feel like the crowd was invested in it. And maybe because the, the crowd was looking at it the same way I did, saying, yo, we just saw this guy wrestle for 40 minutes. Like, what the hell? We're 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 burnt out from Josh Alexander having good matches. I don't know. But we also know that the audio video, an impact from week to week, number one, isn't usually good. And number two, it's inconsistent. 
because when it's one week, it will be good. And then it goes back to sounding really bad again next week and muffled and low quality. So it's hard for me to tell the, 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 this particular episode didn't sound like that same low quality that like overdrive was, but you know, I've talked about before mixing your files down to a mono, uh, mono track. And when it's mono, that means one, it means singular. So all your audio, someone could be yelling over here. Someone could be yelling over here when it's stereo. You can hear that. It's like when you have your headphones on and you're listening to music. Maybe there's a, uh, you know, a, a guitar riff that's panned to the right and you hear it more in, in the right or in, you know, hip hop, a lot of background vocals will be a little more to the left or something like that. Everything is not dead center, especially with instruments or, or hip hop instrumentals. I should say everything is just panned all over the place. It gives it that nice full sound when it's mono. You're putting everything on one singular track. It's all on top of each other. You can't differentiate much. So when a wrestler is talking on screen and people are screaming in the background, you're not going to hear that screaming as well because the wrestler's voice is, is sitting on top of it. But that's what they continually do, mixing down the files. So I don't know if that's what it was. I don't know if it was just, you know, mixed down to a mono file where you just couldn't hear the crowd. It didn't sound like they were into it. I would love to hear from someone who was there. Because you get the, you know, this is awesome chance and all that. But it, I didn't get the feeling that the crowd was like insanely invested in the match. I think part of it was, you know, Josh is going to win. That's that's a big part of it. You can't have 40 minute, 60 minute matches when you know he's not going to drop the title before facing Bully Ray. So when you're watching matches where you know the ending you know the result ahead of time. Then you're just watching the wrestling. You, you know, you don't, you're not invested in what the outcome is. So you're not buying the near falls, you know, no, no point in, I think Mike Bailey was going to beat this dude. So then it's just like a long match, you know, had it been after hard to kill. And there was a chance that Josh might lose it. Maybe, you know, maybe people would have been into this, but it didn't sound like it didn't sound like the people were that into it. Um, it, it went a little slower than I, I expected. A little more high speed, but I guess if you're wrestling for sixty minutes, you can't really kick it into that gear. But I think what the problem was: this wasn't an Iron Man match. If it was an Iron Man match, the crowd would be more conditioned for okay. We know that they're going to wrestle kind of slow leading up to it. They're going to do some you know chain wrestling. There's going to be a lot of break spots. Like we're already preconditioned to know that. But when we don't know how long this match is going to go, it just feels like they never kicked it into that next gear. It's just like, why are they still chain wrestling and, um, and doing break spots? You know what I mean? Because we don't, we don't know what the time, we don't know that it's going to reach the time limit. So I think that's the, that's it with the crowd as well. They're like, when is this, this going to get to that next level? They're thinking that subconsciously, as the match moves on, as opposed to, you know, that this is a 30 minute match. You know, this is a 60 minute match. You guys understand what I'm saying. Are you following me on that? But, um, but it is a match. I think, you know, people are going to talk about for a while. It's going to be one of the, the, the classic impact wrestling matches, but um, it was a big match that, you know, Josh Alexander versus Mike Bailey is a pretty big match to just give away when you know what the result's going to be. You know, um, you've and you've conditioned us to both know that when they're in the ring, we're getting great wrestling. So, you know, you you guys know me. I love builds. I love builds. I hate open challenges and no builds, and that's just not my gig. But I'm curious to know what you guys thought of the main event. If you thought it was just like unnecessarily long, or you thought it was a classic. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, before I don't usually like to talk about BTI, nor do I ever watch BTI. But we got um, Trey McGill and, and and Jason Hotch. They do a good job of letting us know what happened on BTI, and I think that helps make people care about it a little bit. I'm into the Trey McGill character. We're going to talk about this more in a little bit. And I know he wrestled his former student, 
But isn't Jason Hotch a heel? Isn't he an arrogant heel? It's not like we're going to sympathize with him for getting spray painted and and all that. It, it's I don't understand. I would have had him wrestle someone that people actually are invested in as a baby face. That would have made more of an impact. Um, this kicked off with this was my favorite part of the show. Uh, the, the stuff with um, they're showing the the, the Diener stuff with with Angels and Khan and the cleansed Diener. I hope that he goes back to his full name of Cody Diener as the, as the leader. I hate singular names. If you want to do it for your two minions, cool. But um, I hope that he goes back to his full name. I don't know. But this whole package they put together, I said this last week, there's no way the same person puts together these packages that that puts the show together. There's it, It's just impossible. There's no way. No, no effing way. But they do such a tremendous job. And I'm really, really invested in what the design is. They, they're no longer violent by design. They're, they're the design. I'm super invested in it. I like this a lot more than violent by design. To me, Eric Young was just saying a lot of the same shit from week to week. And it got very bland for me. Now, I'll give them the props that they did do little things to make Violent by Design a little bit different when they could. They weren't just doing the same, uh, the same, like OVE was a, was an example where OVE never changed in its presentation and delivery. And it was just the same stable every single day. They just lost a bunch of matches. And there's some people are saying, yo, I hope Sammy Callahan comes in and leads these guys. The last time Sammy Callahan was the leader of a faction, they lost every single time they got in the ring. So I hope it I hope it remains these guys. I know at Winter Warfare, Angels and Callahan are teaming together. So I'm curious to see what's going on with that. And that's because they released these graphics ahead of time, um, which I don't really agree with because it's like telling us you you got a 10, 10 chapter book and you're you're showing us chapter seven before we read chapter one and then we don't really know what how it's going to end either you're giving us stuff without context and i just don't care for that so it's whatever but um you guys may disagree or agree with me on that it's it's whatevs but i'm really interested in this um this deaner stuff what i wasn't particularly interested in was heath and rhino defending their titles against the motor city machine guns I'm 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 not really into Heath and Rhino. I don't I don't mind Heath, but um I just there's not really a match you can give me with those guys where I'm like, yo, I can't wait to see Heath and Rhino versus so and so. It's just um I think their their time there was injuries that took place. I think their time to be champions has just passed. I think had it happened a couple of years ago, it maybe got over a little bit better, but I'm not really interested in them as, as champions. Uh, Motor City Machine Guns should have done one of these titles a very long time ago. And last week, we got two DQ finishes. And we kick off this episode with a DQ finish. What did I say last week? They're afraid for people to beat people. Um, I didn't. I thought that they booked themselves into a bit of a corner here because I was like, "Yo, surely these guys are going to drop the belts." But the Motor City Machine Guns can't lose, you know. There's no reason they should lose to them. And the major players come out, ruin the match. So, so we get we have three DQ finishes in the last four matches, I think, four or five matches on Impact Television at this point. If you're watching Impact, you just tuned in last week, and you know what? I'm going to give Impact a chance. I haven't watched them in years. And you see this string of DQ finishes. You're not going to get re- very invested in what's going on. You're probably not going to come back the next week. But they do a DQ finish, which is which would just screams three-way tag team match at Hard to Kill. It screams it. Like, it cannot scream it any louder. That's what they want to do. Um, 
I'd be okay with heat with major players or motor sim machine guns winning the belts in that in that you know instance. But this is how you're kicking off the show. It's your attention grabber, and it's a DQ finish. The show started with a DQ finish last episode, so now we just have a pattern. Um, after this, <laughs> I, I kind of last call, Johnny Swinger's looking for his um, title shot. <laughs> hey, everyone gets a title shot, right? It says if he wins 50 matches, um, doesn't even re- really wrestle. They don't have like a, you know, a YouTube show where he can try to get his, his wins. I would, I would actually like to see that match. It would just out of pure humor. It would be, it would um, be pretty funny. So, Another really cool part about this show is that it showed um, like a, a Mickey James and Jordan Grace doing a, a photo shoot for their uh, title versus career match at Hard to Kill. That's another thing that the show's missing stuff like that. Them taking photos together and them kind of trash out talking to each other. It's missing that. I really thought, I didn't think, I, I just said last week, I don't know if Mickey, when she won that match with Deanna with that weak, cheap roll up. I was like, if she turning heel, is she not? Is she just doing whatever she needed to do to save her career? I thought they told a crappy story last last week with that. Um, not that the idea of the story wasn't good, but the delivery was very bad. No one knew what to make of it. You know, if the story was Mickey's trying to do anything to keep her career, I thought it was shaky. If the story was Mickey's going to turn heel, I thought the story was shaky. So. I don't know. And, you know, I said last week too, I thought, you know, they've done a good job with the Mickey James last rodeo, but I would have, I would have really preferred it if she really re- wrestled everyone on the roster and had that like Alicia match and that Rosemary match. You know, like if they would do, you know, if, if they had Rosemary versus Mickey James, like people would have really tuned in for that. Mickey versus Taya Valkyrie. Like she really should have ran through the, ro- not ran through the roster, but she should have wrestled the whole roster. You know, that's that's what I really would have liked to see, but uh, clearly that's not what they did. Um, Ty Valkyrie took on Savannah Evans. Savannah Evans gets a jobber entrance and wins the match. So I thought that was a little wild, but I thought it was different too because Savannah Evans doesn't really beat anybody. She's that like that typical muscle who when they have to wrestle and it's like, oh, let's see what you do next week versus Savannah Evans. And then you, they beat her the next week, you know, like she actually won. So she's beaten um, both members of the tag team champions. Are they going to do something with Savannah Evans? This is very interesting. Um, she, like many people have a very uninspiring finisher. Um, but, but this, this piques my interest a little bit because What's next for Tasha Steeles? You know, um, she's done very good at everything they give her, but what's next for her? And then Savannah Evans has just been the same character from day one. Hasn't really taken that next step. Just very stereotypical muscle figure. So what's next for her? Are they going to feud or what? We we don't know, but this is kind of interesting. It was interesting to see her actually beat Taya. It was just different. You know, any other week, Ty would have won the match. So um, I'm interested to see with that, uh, what's going on with that. Um, what do we get this? Uh, Moose attacked Bupinder Gujar after, uh, it, not after, but in, in the hallway. I thought that was pretty well done, too. They're setting up Moose versus Joe Hendry, which I think the average Impact fan has a lot of interest in. I think that's something everyone wants to see. And then Delirious cuts a promo. Um, Challenging the leader of honor no more. <laughs> okay. Eddie Edwards. I've never heard Delirious talk before. I wasn't really like that familiar with the dude. I didn't know he spoke some other language. And he does a good job with it too. Like it sounds it's nonsense, but it's not like like he actually sounds like he's speaking a different language. Which Honestly, I wasn't paying that much attention. I don't know that he was speaking in another language. It's possible he was, but it sounded like he was. It was more like nonsense than anything. Um, I don't know. 
I guess we'll see what happens with that. I don't, you know, impact fan base isn't really conditioned to care about uh, delirious. And then we don't really know what's going on with Eddie Edwards. So we'll see how that, how that goes. Khan took on Sammy Callahan next. And I'm thinking to myself, yo, design is dead in the water. If Khan loses this match, because Khan has wrestled once before on impact and lost to Josh Alexander in like 30 seconds. And I've talked about before. I was a big fan of the Ascension. I don't know what the other dude is doing. I, w- I would bring him in too. I do think, uh, I, I, you know, I've said this every week, you know, for the last few. I really think they need a, he- a female too. You know, sometimes just adding that chick in there, like the House of Black in AEW. Adding Julia Hart in there. Just, it just gives it a little different flavor. Dark Order when they had Anna J And, you know, just put that one chick in there. I think it it adds something. It adds something very different than what we see. How many dude stables have we seen in Impact that are very similar to this? So I hope they bring someone in. But I I, I was like, yo, is Sammy going to win this match? And I can't believe they had Khan win. And he he wins with a Death Valley driver. This is another boring finisher that we see on impact. We just don't see those cool finishers. We don't, but I was really g- glad that con won. And again, I'm, I'm very, very invested in the design and what they're, what they're going to do. They released a shirt of theirs immediately after, which I've been asking for that too. Like put out the damn shirt. You know, when you see something on TV, release the shirt and they actually did it. The shirt is uh, as basic as they come, but it's, it's Okay. I really like the yellow one, but typically yellow shirts are like really bad quality. So I'm a little scared to get it, but I'll get it. I'm probably going to get it because I, I, I like them. I'm I'm very interested in them. Trey McGill had something with Mean Gia backstage. Uh, he was going to spray paint her. I'm into the Trey McGill heel stuff. There's some good stuff going on in Impact right now. They're, they're switching some things up which adds a little more flavor. So I'm, I'm into it. Every time you hear me say what's next for someone, that's my way of saying they are going to be bland moving forward. If they keep doing what they've been doing. So that every time you hear me say what's next, what's next for Tasha steals. It just means you have hit the limit with that character and the direction you've taken them. Now you got a zig. You got a zag. And that's where Trey Miguel was as well. And I'm I'm really interested in this also. Um, and Crazy Steve popped out before he was going to spray paint Gia. And Crazy Steve is such a good talker. And they haven't bring, brought Black Toru's back since he, he lost to Trey Miguel because I guess he got spray painted in the eyes. So um, this is going to be a good little feud for a bit. We, we've needed something meaningful for the D- Decay guys to do for a while. And um, I would be down for a crazy Steve match with, with Trey Miguel. I'd very much be down for that. So that was pretty much the episode in a nutshell. And after that, we got the long 60-minute match. I think more people liked it than didn't like it, but I do see the other side of the coin where some people were like, I just don't have interest in this in these long matches. So I don't know, uh, but that's it. We're going to keep it quick this week, guys, because it was kind of a quick show. It wasn't a quick show, but there was one match that took up half the show. So obviously there's going to be a pretty quick review. That's going to do it for me. Hopefully, as I said, we can return with an episode of the cool factor sooner than later. Uh, Cause we want to talk about the Dazen deal or days. I don't even know how to explain it. Someone, someone can let, or pronounce it. I'm sure someone can let me know. We want to talk about that and you know some of the the deeper stuff we tend to talk to when the the cool factor kicks off. So hopefully we get an opportunity to do that soon. Um, if at any point this year, which they normally do, if they start doing best of episodes and award shows, you're probably not going to get anything podcast wise from us. We might be able to come up with you some mailbag shows or something like that, but I'm not going to review best of shows. And uh, who wins his awards because I don't particularly care. I know I probably owe it to you guys to talk about it. (laughs) Otherwise, that would make me like the number two or the number three place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. But I think you guys 
know me well enough that that's just not something that I'm going to give my all into. If I got to be like, Hey, let's talk about who won wrestler of the year. Like Josh Alexander, right? We already know. So thanks for um, hanging with me this week, guys. I'm your boy BQ. I'm out. Peace.